Hello everyone and welcome back to Night City. Here we are in Cyberpunk 2077. This is not the PC version though. This is the Xbox Series X next gen patched version. Uh, I actually bought a physical copy for this, full disclosure, and I have played well over the five hours, whatever. Uh, there are some weird issues like this lady walking not on the stairs, but walking on the thing underneath. However, I can kind of let small things like that go because this game scale is absolutely massive as you can see looking over the city here as I try not to walk into the street because oh, it's crazy. This game's got all sorts of class and all kinds of great characters. There are things I don't like doing? about it still, but none of them are gameplay involved. So let's get into some of the things I really like and some of the things I don't like. Let's start with uh, some positives. So the first thing Thank I can point out is that this game Boy, is absolutely fantastic on the Series X. I'm sure it the runs just as good on the PS5. Say. Hopefully, I would hope just as good. I had one issue where it dropped a few frames, but it was hardly noticeable. I don't think any of that is visible in this footage here. Uh, you might see some jump cuts around uh, with some transitions. That was me, just to cut out more boring things that I don't think would make a good video. But let's get into it. You're not supposed to be here, and yet... So, gameplay. Gameplay has changed a lot, actually. Uh, they rebalanced a lot of the perks and a lot of the the talent system. It is kind of fas fascinating to see the changes that happened. Uh, one of my favorite new changes has been the throwing knife perk. Where instead of, because it used to be you just threw the knife and then you have to go collect it and re-equip it, which if you know the knife is there, you just press a different button and you can equip it immediately. But, you know, there's also a chance you just lose your knife. So I never used it before, but I use the throwing knife all the time now because it has a cooldown and will come back to you. And you can recollect the knife by just walking over the knife. Uh, you might see it a little bit later where I throw a knife at someone and there's like a blue icon of the knife in them. Uh, depending on how rare the knife is will depend how long the knife sticks into them. Which is fine. Honestly, I have to say that that is a great quality of life improvement. Uh, I did have to adjust the dead zone on the controller. It just felt a little weird to me, but I kind of like my, I like to be able to do finite movements. Uh, let me see here. Uh, driving. We're going to be doing some driving here in a moment. I think I opened the map here, but I edit that out. So we're going to be doing some driving here. Uh, driving is still not great. Um, I feel like I oversteer a lot, even when with very minimal movements of the controller, control stick. I don't know why it feels like that. It feels much better than trying to do it on keyboard, I can tell you that much. I never had any luck trying to drive the car with any sense of normalcy on the controller, on the keyboard rather. So that was fine. One of the things I really like about Cyberpunk is the characters. Like the story for the game is, is pretty good. It, it kind of goes wild on a lot of spots, but for the most part, it is kind of crazy and, and interesting. But That leads me into the the thing that I kind of feel is the weirdest. So when we saw Cyberpunk, or if you've played the opening section, you know there's like a shootout, you're riding in the car, and you have to shoot some punks, 
some maelstromers. I think it is in a or scavengers. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly, but you're shooting them. They're in a van and they like ran into something, run into something. And it's, it's kind of a big showpiece spectacle. That sort of thing rarely happens. There's a couple times where you have to fire at things that are outside of the, oh, excuse me, the, like the car, someone's chasing you or something, but it's usually set for certain quests. It's not something that just happens out of nowhere. Uh, the other thing that seems kind of odd that I feel like should be in the game is some sort of uh, rep system with the various gangs throughout the city, like where you don't do jobs for them directly. You do kind of kill a bunch of them. And I'm pretty sure that they'd be kind of mad if you killed their chooms. Just, just a little bit. Uh, you'll see me like scanning people to see what there is. I usually use the ping to locate people. See where they are, how many of them there are. I think here I decide not to engage. Yeah, we decide not to engage. As, uh, they seem a little too high level for me, judging by the skull. I'm just gonna steal some things here and get some junk that I can turn into crafting materials. Or you could sell for money. It's not a big deal. I'm kind of a hoarder when in these games. I just pick up anything I can and deal with it later. That leads me to one of my more interesting points with the game. I don't like the inventory system. Um, like the gear part of the inventory system is fine, but everything else is not. So there's a you see at the bottom there's like a quick um, slot. There's a grenade slot. There's the call the car and there's the phone. There's no way to have a quick slot for something like food, like you could in food and drink, like you could in The Witcher. Three, and this is using a modified version or a new version of that engine, so I think it's a fair comparison. So to go into use food, for instance, you have to go into the menu, go into your backpack, scroll over to the food section, pick the food you want with the kind of weird cursor movement on the stick. You can, however, just use the D-pad and, and move around through them. And then you Are eat you the ready? things and you'll get your hydration and well-fed buff shot, or whatever. And I will give you a it's just clunky. It's very clunky. I feel like it could be a lot better. Give me. You can like, if you go to a restaurant, for instance, um, they're, tr they're treated like a vendor rather than just like, you know, you go very eat well. something there. I feel the like initial techniques of you should just sit down and they should be like, oh, what do you want? And then you get a food buff and a, and a hydration buff. I will guide you, know, you get a well-fed buff or whatever. So there's some stuff about the game that's kind of weird. And the, some things that are not bad. This is I really place. enjoy a lot of these quests and the world building and, and the city itself is kind of fascinating in a way but i can't help but feel that maybe they oversold it a little bit when they were showing it off originally back in 2018 with the real gameplay like a uh, small for instance there's no subways you can ride on or anything which, having a car, I don't think you'd want. And the road's never that busy that you couldn't drive. So if this is a more realistic simulation, there could be times where driving would be awful. So, not trying to be a weirdo or anything, but that's just the way it is. I kind of feel like... This is... Uh, 
it's like a cut it's like we couldn't do this on old hardware so i'm very interested to see what the first expansion looks like what they're going to add there there's new perks there's new everything and the game is much more balanced for fun and it looks better but there was no real content in this patch it was just like the final bug fix patch and adding small quality of life features before we start seeing the first expansion and i really hope that the expansion i don't know either focuses more on pacifica since pacifica is basically empty or we see something more interesting i feel like you could do um you don't have to play v anymore like you could have a different character you make a different character in it I feel like that was the plan with the, excuse me, with the teased or hinted about multiplayer mode that's supposedly coming. Like honestly, this game is such a looker, like there's, there's so much to like, so much to enjoy about it. But there's definitely just weird design decisions or cutback decisions. I always knew that when I, when we saw this game back in 2018 that the console version would be a pale comparison to what they were showing. Because I remember correctly back in 2018 it was running on a 1080 Ti and it was 30 FPS, the gameplay they were showing. And they showed that... Um, the opening quest that I showed last time where you go in and, and you save the lady and you get her out and for the most part I feel like a lot of that detail was maintained but there's other things that weren't like the the street has less people on it even on the PC version I kind of see that as sort of a It'd be cool to have, like, a usual amount of people on the street, but we can't do it because, you know, the systems can't handle it right now. And that seems like a fair cutback. So the population density right now is going to be kind of low because I think it's like five something in the morning. So there's going to be some people out, but it's not going to be as packed on the streets if it was like noon and there's people out for lunch or whatever. The simulation for when people are out is actually pretty good. But uh, I still feel like there, there is cutbacks from what they showed us before. But again, I feel like it's justified. I'd rather have a game that runs at 60 FPS with less crowd density than a game that's got this massive crowd density. It's got to run like 30 FPS and it suffers from horrible stutters and other things because of this crowd density. However, there is the parade scene where there is a ton of people on screen. And uh, I'm not going to show it because it is because one, I don't have footage of it and two, it is kind of a massive spoiler. There's a lot of people, there's just static people that are just kind of like, I guess they modeled them as some sort of See you around. terrain. So there's just a ton of people around. It is absolutely fascinating. Probably the one biggest moment where I felt like I was actually in a huge city. Um, Get a beer here. Again, Lothbrock maybe. I do you Sorry, feel like boss. there's a reasonable Come amount of people out on the street at Maybe reasonable times? Some people say this gives them hiccups, However, I, never I just had. not a fan of You've some of the lot. cutbacks. One second, I would have liked more car Brad? shootouts. Hey, um, Listen, boss, I feel like it would have been cool out? if you could have had a card like Kit lately, and you seem or something <laughs> sort of uh, kith like in Might as well, since I'm here. Lead the way. Thanks, from Knight Rider, where right. you could like summon the car and he'd come and help you in a fight or whatnot. There's 
You lost your a character mind. that would kind of work for that, being the cab line Delamain. This is a small price to pay but that doesn't really crazy. happen. You still can't let go the back? set pieces, Beth? like the set Beth? What do you think you're doing? pieces are great. But the execution on some things I feel like is lacking. I don't want to focus on negatives because I actually really like Cyberpunk and I feel like it's a fantastic first step in a bigger game that's going to happen in this city. Because the city is huge. It's absolutely massive. It's full of quests and it wouldn't be that hard, in my opinion, to maybe make a few new interior places and have a brand new character be playable in cyberpunk i know a multiplayer game was definitely one of the ones they wanted to do but they were also kind of interested in doing a new witcher type game which could also be cool but i digress i really digress i really digressed here cyberpunk is still great i think it was always good just that the console versions were lacking and from what i've played which is a solid oh i don't want to look at the hours on it it's probably at least 10 15 hours on the game it has been an excellent and almost flawless experience i i don't want to chalk that up to the game because of having issues with other stuff but let's just look quick I'm just trying to get the exact number. 17 hours I have played on the console version, and I'm probably about a quarter of the way through the story. <clears throat> the main story, I should say. There's a lot of fun side quests in this game that are worth doing, and I, probably better than... I don't want to say better than the main story, but... They're definitely more interesting than story missions in other games. Like, I had, I bought a copy of Immortal Phoenix Rising cheap because it was on sale uh, early in the new year. They were trying to get rid of, I guess, extra stock or whatever before they have to do inventory. And that game was kind of a letdown <laughs> in a lot of ways because the story's so silly and cartoony and the stakes for things feel so low and well there's there's events that happen in cyberpunk's main story that have incredibly high stakes there's also side quests that feel so realistic like they're so real it's like oh i have a problem with this guy in some ways maybe you're not gonna do the side quest or the side quest is going to be like super realistic and <clears throat> excuse me in that the fact oh this side quest i unfortunately showed the end of this quest line i showed brandon a little earlier in the footage and this is wait where's brandon? yeah this is the uh, th this quest line is sad but also super fascinating and it's what else did you just tried stopping them told him he was my best friend they looked at me like i was crazy they just talked to him mm. and realized brendan isn't the typical schism i knew it couldn't have just been me he's there's like so a, much personality like person. and so much they took him to a maintenance point one of them i don't want to say sorry for me or something. awful things but like me his card bring him back there's so much I, I can't do this humanity me. in these side quests that in some of them not all of them but there's there's a bunch of gigs i would say which are more of your open world filler type quests go here kill these dudes go here plant this thing Get out of here. 
if you've never played cyberpunk there are three different types of quests main side and gigs gigs are things that fixers give you and usually are just go get me this thing this guy's been in town he's got to do stuff they can fixers can give you side quests that have multiple parts and multiple bits to it but for the most part um Fixers give you like one-time gigs. Go fight this guy. Uh, the tiger claws are doing this. Go take them out. Things like that. Hello, my name is Arif Iqbal, and this is WNS News. But In today's international what's session, so fascinating to me is Asia. sometimes you just stumble upon China a quest, like just stumble upon a character or a thing. And... The agreement, the tariffs for iridium, dysprosium, and lanthanum. Like right now, I just stumbled upon a uh, quest that I wasn't even trying to. I was on my way to go save Brandon, the schism as a, a vending machine. And there's these two taxis stuck on the road and Johnny Silverhands told me maybe I should call Delamay and see if he's okay. Because there was a quest earlier with Delamain, and I don't want to spoil anything because that's a really good quest, and it's one of the ones I highly recommend you do if you go and play this game. Now I need to get to the why why you should play this game and why maybe you shouldn't play this game. Uh, if you've watched this footage so far and you've seen what's going on and you've seen some of the stuff in the background and it's kind of turned you off you probably were turned off the video or just stop watching and listen to my voice but there's a lot of i want to say like rampant this is definitely one of those games that's kind of extremist in the way that it depicts culture if this is rampant consumerism, people have, you know, do whatever, and they, they replace body parts with augments, and, you know, you it's funny because there's even a guy at one point who says something about, you know, he says something that's familiar, but he says it's just a little bit different. He's talking about how, uh, you weren't even alive when, you weren't even a, a twinkle in your dad's Kuroshis when this happened and <laughs> and it's like Kuroshis are, are eye implants you know they're, they're the optics that people have and there's a lot of things like that that just feel uh, natural to the world and they're not Seriously? the same. Like everyone calls low, people tubes and gonks. However it is. Ah, and uh, they brought in. <laughs> really there's no, the I've never slogans, heard any sort of <laughs> but, hey, sexist look, I, I slur in the and game. To have to break like, this isn't like you're playing Grand Theft Auto and you're going to hear like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas or even I five. I, get, I played San Andreas as part of the last one I actually played, so bear with me. I remember hearing the, the N-word several times in that game, but I never heard a slur like that. But the, 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 the usual curses and then gonk seems to be the... Seems to be the, the curse word of choice that is like an insult of choice that isn't well, any sort of I'll other darned. What a pleasant insult. Surprise. What I'm trying you to say to is same-sex marriages in this world and same-sex relationships, same-sex couples Thanks don't seem to be persecuted the but exact same way they the are in real life. Seems but that like also leads to ads that market. are definitely geared towards to same-sex like and person. Opposite sex, really heterosexual like and homosexual couples, I guess would be the best way to say it. Out. And there are Stupid characters Brendan. who will only date the same sex and vice versa or some that are just bi. I feel like it's kind of refreshing to so see that in the game. Because for the longest time, 
games in general with relationships have been an AI, mostly heterosexual close to an AGI. and to see any to sort of AI with the capacity homosexual to relationship well, your processor just isn't big enough is and you'd be correct nice say you must be a pretty good techie your code monkey deserves a prize uh, the there's sex scenes attached to them and I don't want to sound weird but I, I feel like they're very tasteful the ones I've seen uh, depends on the character some characters like it crazy and rough but is that the characters that their sex scenes just feel more personal and more intimate I think intimate is the word that would be ideal to describe them as if I really was a sentient being a but that person? led to one of the things where last joke in the voice of a dying if you remember hero. the mix it up ad what um else can you, do you think you see it briefly when I turn around <laughs> so, after talking to Brandon it. here you know it was what? an ad that Go set I could learn to laugh like that too. I guess it was tumblr Don't or something on, on edge me. because you, you have to, uh, the character is clearly um tell Theo, tell Theo that she's stronger trans than she's I had to find the right word in my head it's clearly trans worry, and the fact that they hey, I don't know how they the, identify so I don't want to put pronouns on it the, uh, the top of the character seems to it has a very nice set of off. of boobs and the bottom section is All over the place man literally the penis successfully. Goodbye, and you can friend. clearly see the penis because she's I'll miss you. there you go again old old habits die hard they're wearing a leotard it's right there on the left that has gone but you know that, that's what it is and that upset people because they're using a trans person to sell a product but that's normalization of, of something and there's a lot uh, there's so many worse themes that are going on inside of cyberpunk that I always felt like that was such a weird stance to take because you're talking about a, a universe where people can basically trade in and out body parts Human life expectancy is much higher. Um, naturally grown food is that is like a rarity now because everything's so processed because of choices that humanity made. So yes, I definitely understand that. There are people who won't like a lot of the subtle world building that exists in cyberpunk. The ads, the... The ads, there's some quests that involve sex workers and very mature themes. This game is not mature with no reason, I believe it even says on the ESRB rating let me see what the ESRB say blood, gore, intense violence, nudity, strong language strong sexual contents use of alcohol and drugs yep, there is all of that and more if you ask me this game is absolutely fantastic and I, I love it um this current 1.5 patch version is the most playable and most stable I've seen it yet. Granted, this is on next-gen hardware. I haven't installed it on my One S to see how it handles, but honestly, I don't think I want to play it on that. If that's the only way you could have played it, I'm sure you still had a good time because maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. I honestly hope that people give Cyberpunk 2077 a chance. I know a lot of people out there played it, and I'm sure a lot of people loved it, and some people probably didn't like it. But really? It's this game that... Yes! 
it unfortunately is like how not to release your game but the actual game part of the game is good the story part of the game is good and the game is where it should have been so, did you find him? over a year ago where is he? Is which he is back? sad to say it was over hold on it came out 2020 we're in 2022 oof it gets bad news it sucks that publishers and investors and all that pushed them to release this game early but i feel like it needed to happen to some games and at least cd project red has fixed it i mean i feel like it pushed back a lot of their plans with the expansions and whatever other content they have you know, planned for cyberpunk got me out but the game is now in a dark place playable state it doesn't matter who or what on at are. least the next gen consoles that i think is absolutely fantastic the pc version was always playable it had some bugs but with a world and an environment this big you're going to have uh, issues like that but i've been going on for 30 minutes plus there's not much more i have i probably could talk about this game for an hours and hours and hours because it is so fascinating but i gotta leave it here uh feel free to check it out like i said it's all the next gen console versions you have five hours free try it out i'm about 17 plus hours into the game i hope you enjoy it i think it's also 50 percent off on consoles digitally and I saw it on sale for a physical copy. I think I got mine for about 30 bucks. But uh, until next time. Mata de.